Hello and welcome to the second episode of Kapal Student Media's podcast, now newly named as the Penny Podcast. Because if we can make sense, then anything can. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Akanja Singh, and I'm in 11th grade, and I'm a staff writer on Sidekick. I'm Neha Desiraju. I'm in 10th grade, and I'm also a staff writer on Sidekick. And I'm Sarah Wu, 11th grade, and also a staff writer. And just to briefly summarize the podcast, the Penny Podcast is a weekly hybrid podcast that incorporates elements of interview and conversation with rotating hosts. And today, our special guest is the Claire Clements for her article, My Pink Skirt Doesn't Define Me and It Shouldn't Define You, published under our opinion section. Claire, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi, I'm Claire Clements. I am an 11th grader and I'm the editorial page editor. All right, and right before we get into the interview, we're just going to briefly cover the headline rundown, and if Neha, you would like to take the lead for that. So our first story comes from Armand Merchant, and he is a staff writer, and he wrote an article titled, Sea Store, Sea String of Recent Thefts, published under our news section. And our second story comes from Umi Saria, who is a staff writer on Sidekick, and she wrote an article titled, New Club Celebrates Campus Cultural Diversity, under our Student Life section. It details the Language Beyond Barriers Club, which Umi said, ESL students can communicate with other students their age who speak the same language as them to help them learn English. All right, thank you, Akasha and Neha. And now that we're a little bit more into the podcast, we could just go ahead and start interviewing Claire. So if anyone would like to, you know, bombard her with a question, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so I actually have a question for you, Claire. And I wanted to know, was any part of your story difficult to write? And if so, which part and why? Um, I th- kind of think all of it was hard to write just because this was kind of something I never really expressed before, um, especially with like my mom. She reads like every story I post and I never really like talked to her about this type of thing and so I was kind of worried how she would react. As well as I mentioned my cousin, that was probably the hardest part if I had to decide just because I was afraid people would be like, wow, her cousin's a jerk and it was like, <laughs> no, like he's like a brother to me, I love him. It was just like something that had happened in our past. And so that was probably the hardest thing, just thinking about like what my family was going to think. Mm-hmm. And in one part of your article, you mentioned that in eighth grade, you started to read more and more about feminism. So mm-hmm. was this a specific turning point for you when you started to become more aware of fem- feminism? Or was there a certain person, social media group, anything that was kind of the turning point for you? And then you started to really think about the ideology of feminism? I can't pinpoint like a certain time where I was just like, all right, I'm a feminist. (laughs) But I do think that it was kind of a lot of reading and a lot of understanding what the movement is about. As for a person, my uh, other cousin, my older cousin, Carly, um, even though she never really identified herself as a feminist, she was kind of like the strongest like woman I know in my life. You know, as we tend to define like, oh, she's such a strong woman. She was kind of that person in my life Mm -hmm. and she always encouraged me to you know, find that in myself. I so. see. So um, you said, you know, that you were educated about feminism and everything around eighth grade. So to you, is feminism something that you think everyone should be educated about? You know, everyone should at least be exposed to at least once in their lives. Yes, definitely. I think a lot of people tend to, they are feminists, but they, f- they, c- they kind of don't identify themselves with the movement. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to do that just because there are people who are like, you know, they think, oh, feminism is about like hating men. And I think by identifying themselves with the movement and understanding what the movement is actually about, they can better educate others. And just to add on to that, so how do you think we could educate not only like our current generation, but also, Mm -hmm. you know, upcoming generations, especially of girls who may be experiencing like similar things as you have? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I kind of think, I might be biased because I am a part of the media, but I think like, um, I think whenever we report stories regarding feminism, not that we should obviously be biased towards them, but I think we should be able to talk about what the movement actually is. Mm. Yeah, and a lot you also talked about, you know, um, how the non-stereotypical girl was praised in a lot of the books you read about. Do you think it's important um, to Um, have more stories with stereotypical girls obviously portrayed in a positive light because I feel like you know we don't have a lot of that do you think it's something that you're concerned about I think it's important but I also think it's we can't like there isn't just you know oh the stereotypical girl who likes pink and the non-stereotypical girl who hates everything else Mm -hmm. like it's a mix like 
I talked about wearing pink skirts, but I actually prefer pants. <laughs> but I do love um, the color pink. Mm-hmm. So it's not just one way or the other. So I think rather than saying, like, yes, obviously we should place the stereotypes in positive light, I think we should acknowledge that girls are multifaceted. We're not just one or the other. Mm-hmm. Right, and I think it's important to mention that because I, as I was reading your article, I or your, your opinion story, I was in, it was interesting to see how even something just as the color pink, just mm-hmm. a, something that seems so small, it has such a bigger meaning in the context of feminism and probably breaking down these stereotypes and coming to accept every girl for who she is. Mm-hmm. And like around the time that this like story was published, Mirna Contra actually talked about this same thing where like we used to hate the color pink for no reason right. and now we love it. And so I think it was very like I think relevant to every single girl because they've been through that little like phase in their life at one point. Yes. So yeah, mm-hmm. everyone did like that part. Do you think a greater a greater awareness of feminism would probably maybe the next generation of girls may not be a group of girls who just grew up hating the color pink and maybe ease their way into learning, but maybe they just don't see a problem with it. Do you think feminism, you know, do you think, I think feminism has made major strides and bigger issues too, but do you think even with the smaller mindsets, do you think over time feminism will be able to eliminate that? Mm -hmm. I definitely think that. I think we, as a movement, I think we're becoming more progressive in what age range we kind of apply to. Like, growing up, Feminism has been around since, like, forever. Right. (laughs) But it wasn't really something that was talked about when I was little, and that doesn't apply to everybody because we all have different upbringing. But I think nowadays, like, I'm seeing children's books about feminism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's becoming more that people are recognizing that they need to, you know, feminism isn't just something that's for the adults. They Mm -hmm. need to be able to tell their kids, like, hey, like, this is what's okay and this is what's not. And I think Mm -hmm. feminism applies to that. Yeah, especially with the Women's March, which is, I think, two years old. Yeah. I think this was their third Women's March, right, this Mm -hmm. year? Yeah, definitely, because um, now we see, when I went to the Women's March, I saw, like, little girls as well as adults and men and women, just a whole diverse group of people. So how have your friends and family reacted to your article? Um, a lot of, they, they've all liked it. Um, the cousin that I mentioned in the story has not read it, so <laughs> I'll have to see what he thinks. But um, my mom, she did, she read it, and she really liked it. And then I had a couple friends who came up to me and were like, hey, like, I saw your story, and I was, like, really cool, and I experienced the same thing. So it was really nice. I got some comments from both, like, current and former um, sidekick members about it, and um, I thought that was really nice, so. Did you get anything from the guys in your life, particularly? Uh, I didn't. (laughs) I'll have to ask a couple of them. Unfortunately. (laughs) Hmm. But on that point, do you think that maybe the the messages of feminism need to be equally understood by both men and women you yes. know, to progress. I definitely I know so. some, I have a couple of guy friends who kind of went through the same thing, not with the pink side, but with right. the blue side. I and see, yeah. They felt they had to be like very stereotypically masculine or like that was bad. And so um, I kind of feel like with guys, I, I, I can't speak because I'm not a guy, <laughs> but um, I felt like they were encouraged to be stereotypical while mm-hmm. while girls weren't encouraged like they were encouraged mm-hmm. to be like the complete opposite right. so that's that's from what i've seen yeah and i that's think that transitions really well into how like toxic masculinity has also become a pretty big issue nowadays and seeing how like people are speaking up on the feminist side it also be nice to like you know see some guys mm-hmm. talk about the toxic masculinity and how that's also affected them because i'm sure it's done like the same amount of problem making as it has on our side right and so Mm -hmm. it'd be nice to hear some from the guy side as well yeah your story actually reminded me of one of my friends I had in like third grade (laughs) and there was this one time when he like deliberately wore a pink shirt because his friend told him that he couldn't like pink and I just like I was like that was I felt like that was a really good um tie into your story nice yeah so if we are done with the little interrogation. Claire, would you like to finish it off with a quote from your article? Sure. Where will you want? Be loud, be quiet. Do what you want. At the end of the day, you're still a beautifully strong girl. Well said. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good quote. And um, thank you, Claire, once again for being such a great guest, being willing to answer all of our very personal questions, and to Akansha Neha for being great host today. And of course, thank you to the listeners for joining us in the second episode of the Penny Podcast. All the links that to the articles that we mentioned will be provided in the description box below. And make sure to join us next Thursday for another installment of the Penny Podcast. Woo!
Yay! <laughs>